Some of you will surely be very familiar with the typical Windows 11 upgrade dilemma, besides the usual strict system requirements such as the much debated TPM 2.0, things such as Secure Boot and the GPT partition table closely related to UEFI firmware also are part of the requirements, at least officially. There always is some form of workaround out there. But what if you don't want to go with a fresh clean installation and instead prefer to upgrade to Windows 11 while your current operating system install Windows 10 is based on the outdated legacy MBR partition table? So you often hear and read about on how to convert MBR to the most recent GPT table without actually having to lose all one's data. Needless to say, there are completely free options out there, such as a tool by Microsoft themselves. Unfortunately, user friendliness isn't always Microsoft's strength and fiddling around is off-putting to many, which is understandable. So in this video, I'm going to show you the usual dilemma we tend to run into and will then show you how you can easily and effectively convert MBR into GPT without any data loss. All that will be achieved and done with a tool going by the name of Minitool Partition Wizard. A lot of you surely will be familiar with it. It's a fairly versatile piece of software that doesn't just offer partitioning functionality, but also cloning and conversion processes. Quite a few of those mentioned things are usable even in the freeware version of the tool. At this point, I'd like to make it very clear that this is a sponsored video, meaning I'm getting paid to produce it. Every single dollar helps me pay bills and keep my channel up and running. Nonetheless, a sponsorship doesn't influence or bend any of my opinions, which is why I'll clearly point out that it's not just Minitool offering us these kind of features, but lots of competing software packages do too. Before we move on, I'd like to point out another thing. In order for what I've planned today to actually work, you need to make sure your motherboard is UEFI capable and doesn't just support the classic legacy BIOS. Of course, there are certain unofficial workarounds to bypass these requirements, but one would have to go for modifications and that's really not the point of today's video. So let's get started. I've already prepared a fresh installation of Windows 10 with the latest updates installed. And in order to even check what partition table your Windows is actually running on, you could simply fire up the disk management and inspect the drive in question. As you can see, my Windows 10 install, in this case, is running on the master boot record, MBR. Just ignore my second drive, titled Windows 11 here. That's only my personal private installation. One way to check whether or not your PC is Windows 11 ready is to download and run the PC Health Check tool by Microsoft. That tool tells me right away that Secure Boot is a must here too. If I were to plug in my Windows 11 USB flash drive and try to run the installer, I wouldn't get any further due to that missing Secure Boot implementation. Secure Boot, however, is closely related to UEFI and thus the GPT partition table. Nonetheless, let's assume I have very little idea what I'm doing and just follow along. Therefore, I make my way into the UEFI BIOS, basically the firmware of my motherboard, and locate the Secure Boot function. I easily found it and try to enable it, but I immediately fail to do so. A platform key is needed. Luckily, one can usually easily install such without any issues, but now it says CSM needs to be disabled. Well, not a problem either. After saving and rebooting, I am now finally allowed to properly enable Secure Boot. It's just a bummer that the old school legacy drive now completely disappears from the UEFI BIOS. We are talking of exactly the drive Windows 10 is installed on, and that's despite the SSD clearly still being connected via SATA. So we obviously won't get any further here. So all those steps I've taken need to be rolled back again. Now back within the disk management, we could try and snoop around. Maybe there actually is an option to simply convert to GPT in here. That of course does not work. So it's time to get some assistance from the software package Minitool Partition Wizard. We are in fact given the choice to go for a few different languages here, but I'm going to pick English. The next step leads us to a nice offer in fact. We can go for a trial of the pro version of the Partition Wizard. 
In that case, I'm not going to say no to this, even though I actually do own a license key I could make use of. Maybe I'll need it anyway, we'll see. Following that, we'll have to go through the usual boring installation procedure, we all know how that goes. Alright, very well. Both of my SSDs get detected. As you can see, my private install is running the proper GPT partition table. Today's drive, on the other hand, is still making use of MBR. So you simply pick your target drive and go ahead with the first steps for the MBR GPT conversion. We are getting warned though that after the conversion, we'll have to switch from the legacy BIOS mode to UEFI. If you don't do that, booting from the GPT drive will no longer work. In the end, you'll have to confirm all that and move on. Unfortunately, it turns out that we are obviously dealing with some sort of limited pro trial version of the partition wizard, which is a bit of a bummer and slightly misleading. But oh well, then I guess I'll just paste my juicy license key in there and I'll be on my way. Now, since the operating system is located on the affected drive, in order to go through with such a procedure, the PC will have to be restarted. The software by Minitool will only take a few seconds to get the job done of converting the partition table before Windows actually loads. Once it's done, it'll restart your PC once more. At this stage, it is advisable to head back into the BIOS or rather UEFI one more time and set the boot order accordingly. Magically, my UEFI BIOS now recognizes the GPT partition and there's no further adjustment needed on my part in order to boot from my still Windows 10 drive for now. That did work like a charm and there's absolutely no data loss whatsoever involved. All programs and personal files are left untouched, nothing has changed. The Minitool partition wizard therefore has completed its intended job. It's quite shocking how easily it got the job done, given that it's not exactly the smallest procedure, if you will. The rest what's to follow here pretty much is self-explanatory. Officially, upgrading to Windows 11 at this point is fairly straightforward. You barely need to move a finger for it. After about 10 to 20 minutes, I have transformed my old, outdated Windows 10 installation into a brand new Windows 11 install. The Minitool Partition Wizard certainly does deserve some praise, not only for its simplicity and speed, but also for its user-friendliness. Of course, the procedure I've shown didn't happen free of charge. Whether or not all that is worth spending money on, you have to decide on your own. Alternatively, you could just use Microsoft's own but more complicated option or you just go ahead and aim for a fresh, clean installation of Windows 11 with all the right settings beforehand. With that being said, it's time to end this video. Hopefully a few of you found it somewhat helpful. Thank you so much for watching everyone.